So this is our second podcast talking about assets and bases, and we've spent a day, a couple days, looking at the strength and recognizing that acids produce hydrogens, bases are producing hydroxide. So now we're just going to put some numbers to the same concept. So let's look at just water, and this is the self-ionization, and this is where it just kind of all comes from. Water will break into, oh look at hydrogen, hydrogen and hydroxide. Okay, notice it's a double arrow. That means you're not getting a lot of hydrogen and hydroxide, but it is a very weak, weak, weak electrolyte. That's why they tell you to get out of the water when you have an electrical storm coming by because it will conduct electricity because it is making hydrogens. So what we know then at 25 degrees, Okay, so we're saying at normal conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, we know our concentrations. So the amount of hydrogen, oh, one thing, these brackets. This is shorthand. These brackets equals concentration, which is in molarity. So the bracket, when I see that bracket, it says the concentration. So for instance, I know the concentration of the hydrogen. I have one mole of hydrogen in every um, one times 10 to the seventh liters. So the hydrogen concentration is one times 10 to the negative seventh. Well, at 25 degrees, pure water, the hydroxide con concentration is also one times 10 to the negative seventh. So that's why we say it pure tap water is neutral. So look what happens. It's neutral if the hydrogen is equal to the hydroxide. They equal each other out. Well, it's a constant. And this constant is called the Kw, and it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. It's always that value. So if I know one of my concentrations, if I know hydrogen, I can calculate the hydroxide because what you, would you do? You would just rearrange the equation. So it would be Kw over hydroxide. So let's look at what we know then. So determine the hydrogen ion. Now they could have also said hydronium and the hydroxide. And so look at what I know. Well, HCl is a strong acid. And I'm going to tell you the only thing that you are going to see are strong acids. We're not going to worry about weaks because you have to do more. So our focus, everything, if I give you an acid, you assume it's strong. So if it's strong, that means 100% ionizes. So if I give you the acid concentration, it is the hydrogen concentration. So what is my hydrogen concentration? It's just 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, one thing with um, the significant figures. We would say this is 1.00, so let's go ahead and give ourselves the three significant figures. And this looks like a 9. This is a fourth, okay? Negative fourth. It's just what this is. So that was half of it. Now I want the hydroxide. I'm going to use Kw to find that, and so I know it's going to be Kw over my hydrogen kind of inverse of this one. So I know Kw, it's a constant, 10 to the negative 14th, there we go, excuse me, divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 4th. So my hydroxide concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. So this, this next one, what do I know? My sodium hydroxide. What does sodium hydroxide produce? It produces hydroxide. Again, it's a strong base. You're only going to see strong bases. So when you see the base, you recognize it's producing the hydroxide. So there is one of your answers. Molar. Okay, but I also asked for the hydrogen. So what is your hydrogen? You're going to again use Kw over, um, over my hydroxide, I'll do it in the formula first. Plug in what I know, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, it's going to be over 2.5 times 10 to the negative third, and so that's divided by a fourth, so it's going, I know it's going to be 4, and it's going to be 4 times 10 
to the negative twelfth. So you have two answers. This is hydroxide, excuse me, this is your hydroxide, this is your hydrogen. Okay, so this is good and people need to know the hydrogen and the hydroxide concentrations. Because of pH, think of, um, excuse me, not pH, but just think of if you have a fish tank, if you garden, you need to know how acidic or basic your scale is. Because let's look up over on this. So we said that if they're the same, it's neutral. Well, if you have more hydrogen than hydroxide, find a place to put this, this would be acidic. And so the opposite then, if you have more hydroxide than hydrogen, we say it's basic. So you have a fish tank or a swimming pool and you put a strip in and then you pull it out and you say, okay, it's one times 10 to the negative fifth. What does that mean? So a pH scale was made and a pH scale is a log rhythmic function. And so what it's doing is eliminating the function. So what we know is pH, and it's written down there, is negative log of your hydrogen. Okay, P means negative log. Put that in your brain somewhere. That's just what P means. So if I have pH, it means negative log of H. If you have POH, it means you're going to take the negative log of OH. And so what happens when you take the log of something, you get rid of the exponents. So now, instead of times 10 to the negative seventh, we just have seven. So if you have a pH of seven, it is not acidic, it is neutral. So if you have a pH then, and just kind of ignore the POH, we're going to look at that relationship. If you have a pH between 0 and 7 or less than, I would just even say less than 7, you have an acidic pH, which means there's still more hydrogen than hydroxide here. That's why the pH. If you have a pH greater than 7, so I'd say less than this way, let's get rid of that, then it is basic. What happens if you have a base? You have more hydroxide than hydrogen. That's why it's a basic pH. So above seven means it's a base. Below seven, it's an acid. Seven is neutral. So if there's a bunch of formulas here, but let's look at how, what they have in common. So we just said pH is the negative log of H and pOH then is the negative log of OH. These are opposite, so look at the relationship. They're opposite each other. So right here, what we just did, P, again, negative log of KW is 14. This is really what you need to know. If I have a pH, 14 minus your pH will be your pOH. 14 minus your pOH will be your pH. It's a very, very useful way of getting one to another. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, these are inverse relationships. So if I need, what if I have a pH and I want to find a hydrogen, you're going to use the inverse function. Okay, so find your calculators. You need your calculators. Don't freak if you haven't done logs. It's a button on the calculator. We're not going into rules of logarithms or anything like that. All that you need to know is a button on a calculator. So to calculate this, look at my hydrogen. You would enter in the calculator negative log 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Press enter and what do you get? You get a pH of 9. So what type of solution? Look at its pH. It's above 7 so it is a basic solution because its pH is greater than 7. So enter this in the calculator. You should have gotten a pH of 6 this means this was acidic. Now this one says it's hydrochloric acid, but remember I'm only going to give you strongs. That is the hydrogen concentration. Enter in the calculator, negative log 0.01. Okay, or are you noticing a shortcut? When the coefficient is 1, the exponent, negative the exponent is the pH. So if I wanted, without my calculator, 
this would have a pH of 2, which means it would be acidic. Okay, <coughs> so on multiple choice in AP, they don't get to use a calculator, but that's the shortcut we know. We're going to let you use a calculator so you can use a button on the calculator. Let's look at the difference kind of over here. I want to go from OH to pH. Notice these two aren't directly related. So we're going to have to do it in a couple steps. From an OH, calculate the POH, and then you can calculate the pH. Because I know 14 minus your POH will equal your pH. So again, here's my shortcut. You can plug it into the calculator. You'd say negative log 1 times 10, the negative fifth, or this means it has a pOH of 5, so its pH is 9, because 14 minus 5 is 9. It's a basic solution. Use the pH to determine if it's basic or acidic. NaOH, remember, everything is strong. That means you know the OH. So it would have a, here's my shortcut, 1 times 10, the negative fourth, so it's just a 4 which means the pH is 10. It's a base, which makes sense because that is a base. Same thing, lithium. That is your concentration. So we want to do our shortcut, 1, 2, 3. This is 1 times 10 to the negative third, which means it has a pOH of 3. 14 minus 3 is 11, so it is also a basic solution. So what if I want to go backwards? So what I enter in the calculator, this is where you're going to need your calculator to practice, 10 to the negative pH. So on this first one, 10 to the negative 4.0 will equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, the shortcut on this, when the pHs end in zeros, you know that Whatever the pH is, is just the negative of the exponent times 10 to the negative fifth. So if a pH of 7, neutral, 1 times 10 to the negative seventh. So look at if it has a pH of 0. Well, this would be 1 times 10 to the 0. Well, that means that goes away, so your answer is just a concentration of a 1 molar solution. Okay, pH, pOH, uh-oh, not a direct relationship. So from pH, you're going to have to find the pOH, and then I will take 10 to the negative pOH to find your um, concentration. So 14, well, 14 minus 14 is 0. So again, remember what we're doing here, I'm saying that pOH equals 14 minus your pH is how I'm getting these numbers. So what is my concentration? Well, again, 1 times 10 to the 0 just is going to be a 1 molar solution. pH of 2 means you'll have a pOH of 12. So the OH is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. pOH of 4 14 minus 4 means a pOH of 10. So it's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. pH of 1, pOH of 13. So 1 times 10 to the negative 13th. Okay, that's when they're nice even numbers. Well, guess what? They're not always nice even numbers. So you're just going to use a calculator, a button on the calculator. So this whole number you would just enter negative log 1.45 times 10 to the negative ninth. And what do you get in the calculator? So you just literally are typing that in and you should have gotten a pH of 8.84. What type of solution? Look at its pH, it's above 7. It's a basic solution. Same thing, enter it in, negative log of 2 times 10 to the negative 6. This gives you a pH of 3.7, which means it is 
acidic. Okay, I'm going to leave this one for you. So, OH to pH. Same thing. If I have an OH, first when you do negative log of OH, you get a pOH. Do that first, and then you're going to do 14 minus your pOH to equal your pH. So plug in the calculator. Negative log of 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, you get 4.60. And then 14 minus 4.60 is 9.40. That's a basic solution. Sodium hydroxide means that is your OH. So negative log 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, you get a pOH of 3.35, which means your pH is 10.65, which again above 7 means it's basic. Okay, you do that one. So more calculator practice, just 10 to the negative pH, enter that. Now the 10 to the negative pH, this is the second function on your calculator, do second log. So this is second log is how we get that 10. It will say 10 to the x. That's the button you're looking for on your calculator. So on this one you will have 10 to the negative 4.15 and what do you get? should be 7.08 times 10 to the negative fifth. Same thing, 10 to the negative 5.35, 4.47 times 10 to the negative sixth. Okay, leave these two for you. This one, one more step, pH, go to pOH, then 10 to the negative pOH. So 14 minus 13.32, then you're going to put 10 to the negative 0.68 and you get a 0 0.21 concentration. 14 minus 10.45, 3.55, the hydroxide, 10 to the negative 3.55, 2.82 times 10 to the negative fourth. That looks really bad. This is just negative fourth. Okay, guess what? Yep, keep practicing your calculators. You want your stamps? You need to have those finished. One, two, three, four, five, six. Have those finished. We will see you in our next class.